Hello crafty friends, welcome to today's video. Today I'm going to create a just for you card using this present aperture die and I'm going to start off by doing a little bit of mixed media on this piece of mixed media paper. I've got this script mixed media stamp here, it's unreadable, it's just to create some texture, some writing texture on my mixed media and I'm using a stamp positioner because it's quite an intricate stamp and I want to get a good impression. I'm going to do some heat embossing. So I shall just anti-static and anti-grease my paper. And then we'll stamp our stamp with some embossing ink. And press it down. And I'm going to do that again, like I say, just to get a really good impression. And now we're going to dip it in my gold embossing powder. That looks good. And heat it with a heat tool. Then we have some lovely gold heat embossing. So the next thing I'm going to do is blend some colour onto this to create my presence, the bits that are going to go in the aperture. And I want a different intensity of colour on each one. I think I want a lighter colour at the top, then a medium, and then a darker, more intense colour. And the easiest way for me to do that, I think, is to blend three different intensity panels and then I can cut my presence from that. So this bit here, I'm going to go over quite lightly so it has a light green on it. I'll leave that like that for now. And here I'm going to go direct to paper. Is that going to be enough? Yep. Yeah. To get a nice dark green. And then I'm going to build up the middle so it's somewhere in between the two end colours. Okay, so I think I've got a fairly good gradation of colour going over there. I'm just going to give the end one some more saturation, boost the middle one a bit and then leave the end one there really light. And then I'm going to buff this so that the gold hasn't got any ink left on top. There we go. So this is a bit blotchy, but it will kind of smooth out. And by the time I've cut my little bits from it, you won't be able to see any blotchiness. So I'm going to cut this down quite carefully. So that I can get what I want from it. I do want when I die cut to get the writing horizontal level across the die cut. So I'm going to put a bit of tape on when I run it through the die cutting machine. This one, I only really want the middle parcel for the middle saturation of green. So it doesn't matter if it's not quite wide enough at the bottom. So there we have my present bits. This one I think could do with a bit more darkening. So I'm going to squish some more ink onto that one. My card blank is smooth white cardstock and it's five and three quarters by five and three quarter inches. And what I want to do is to add a frame to the front and I've got this stitched frame die. But I'm also going to use the bit that it cuts out to cut my aperture present from. But none 
of my smooth white cardstocks match this card they're slightly different and look a bit weird when you put one on top of the other so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my frame from a spare card from the same pack as this so they will match so if you find your colors are a bit off if you're using card blanks just sacrifice a, a card blank to cut your things from and then they'll be perfectly matching so there we have our frame that's going to go there and that's the inside of the frame which i'm going to cut my present from so to get everything lined up i'm going to pop this square in the corner of my scoreboard i have got a corner positioner here which is three yep three eighths of an inch and i'm going to pop that in there and then I'm going to pop my die here, press it firmly against the corner positioner and that will make sure it's level with the edge of the square and uh, sort of equidistant in. And then pop that down. Hang on, where's the sticky bit? There. There's the sticky bit. Pop that down, hold it in place with some sticky note and run that through my die cutting machine. And there we have our aperture. So I'm going to sort start to assemble things now. So to add my frame, I'm just going to dot a little bit of tacky glue all the way around. Not too much, just enough to give me a bit of wiggle room and some good adhesion. Then I'm going to pop my T-square ruler here, pop that on there like that should be in the middle get that nice and level and then pop that in there to help me get my frame square now i'm not going to stick this down just yet but what i'm going to do is use it to stick my present shapes in so i've got a little bit of tacky glue i'm going to spread it out find my tweezers and then get my present shapes hopefully in the right spot press them down So I've got those stuck down because I've used wet glue. There's a little bit of sort of seepage that's grabbing onto my top piece here, the white piece, but that's okay. If I'm gentle and use my tweezers just to poke everything back down where it should be, and we should be all right. And worst case scenario, if I have to cut the square again, I can. Now this die is a little bit peculiar in that the way it cuts the presents down here, the ribbon is white but then when you get to the top it's got an aperture for the ribbon so I'm thinking the ribbon on the top I'm going to make gold so that there's something to pop in there So I'm having some issues getting my bow where I want it. It's not a big deal because this mess here is going to be covered up eventually. But what I'm going to try and do to get things working properly is I've put some double sided on the back of this gold. And now I need to try and find the die. I've put it somewhere and I cannot see it. I found it. So I'm going to cut my bow from the gold cardstock with double sided sticky on the back. Now, I want to make sure that's dry so I'm not going to stick anything that I don't want to stick to it. Now, grab these bits which should be sticky on the back, yes, and pop them in here.
and I'm going to recut my aperture and because I used the corner positioner to line up my die on my square bit of paper everything should be in the right place so I've cut my new panel front and my aperture is in exactly the right place and fits on there just lovely but what I'm going to do before I stick it down is pop some foam on the back and I've got these teeny tiny skinny little foam strips and I'm going to cut a small one tiny little bit here and see if I can hide it behind this bow I think so that will support that bit and then let's see an even teeny tinier bit yeah that will be hidden behind that bow to support the middle of the present so we've got that all lined up nicely and you can see all the inlaid bits through the holes now I could have cut instead of the little bits and inlaying them I could have cut say a rectangle of the green and put it behind each present but because these little bits here are so skinny I'm not sure I would have got the join in the right place if you see what I mean having the inlaid bits just means that I'm getting the right bit of color in the right place and I'm not sort of trying to line things up and I also really like the way when you peek through the aperture, you can see the perfect beveled edges and shape of the presents. I think it's a slightly more polished look. Now I was a little bit premature in sticking the craft foam on the back because I forgot that I wanted to stamp a sentiment. So what I've done is I've pulled out my Tim Holtz stamp position. Now, I rarely use this. It was one I used for such a long time, but I wanted a bigger one, one that would take traveller's notebook size pieces of paper, which are eight and a quarter uh, high. Uh, so I bought one off Amazon and then this just sort of languishes in my drawer, waiting to be used and never really gets used. But it hasn't got any padding in here like my other ones. The other, I've got one with a grip mat and one with a sponge or foam mat. This one hasn't got one. Uh, so I think I should be able to stamp quite successfully if I do it gently just there because this has got foam on it now and that will you know, obviously change the height. So I'm thinking I might be able to stamp even though it's got foam on it. Just going to gently push down, see if that worked. Not quite, a bit more of a push. No, okay, that didn't work. This is going to be one of those videos where everything just goes wrong. I might try and just give it a li little bit more of a lift by adding some card behind it. I might have to cut this aperture for a third time. We're going to call this video the one where everything goes wrong. So third time lucky. I've got my aperture cut here. I'm going to pop it in the corner back to my trusty stamp platform. I'm just going to use this grid to get this lined up straight where I want it. Excuse my head. Pick that up, get that out of the way, make sure that's back in the corner and we're going to stamp our sentiment. Perfect. Okay, I'm going to put foam on the back of that and then get it stuck to my card front. Right, there we go, that's all stuck together. The last thing I want to do is add a little bit of gold card so I've cut a circle of gold die cut a circle using this little edging die and I'll pop that on there because the bow looks a bit naked to me I've cut some little circles out of white card and I'm going to add these to the front here to finish them off 
adds another little layer of dimension as well. And I think that'll do. I really don't feel the need to add any more to that. I think it will just uh, lose its clean and simple look. I hope you've enjoyed the video and my trials and tribulations <laughs> have uh, maybe helped you think through or troubleshoot some of the things that happen to you when you're card making. You can always cover things up and pretty much 100% of the time you can always rescue something or put something aside and use it for something else. So if you were to look under this panel, it looks a right old mess with bits of glue and torn paper and whatnot. But you'd never know, would you? You'd never know, looking at that, that underneath there was uh, all sorts of uh, mess going on. So yeah, you can always rescue something somehow. Just cover it up, really, that's my motto. Right then, I shall leave it there for today and I will hope to see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.